uh, not center, but edge, I'm going to maybe make it, always good to put your preview on, maybe make it, not 25, but maybe make it 15, put your preview on and often you'll see. All right, so isn't that just spectacular? So that kind of gives us this beautiful, beautiful, soft um, inner, uh, in our shadow, which is give this um, amazing, uh, amazing perspective. All right, going to the Y mode again, um, and we're nearly done. Now going to kind of zoom in, and I'm going to do my inner little uh, button. So again, I'm going to choose a circle. I'm going to hold my um, uh, hold my uh, Alt and Option. So draw from the inside out, and it's a constrained uh, circle. All right, and then again, I'm going to choose my gradient. And all of these gradients are kind of the same. So once you start it, uh, you know, you can um, you can actually just um, continue working with them. This one seems a little bit, little bit light, but now this is also another great option. If you if you push G. By the way, the gradient annotator comes up. If it doesn't come up, then you can find it under window. Now, what is nice about the gradient annotator is I can actually move the orientation of the stops in here, which is really useful. All right, so you see if I if I move them, then uh, this gradient actually becomes a little bit more precise or a little bit more uh, darker. All right, what is also kind of nice about it, I don't know if you know, if, if I double click on the stop, I can actually amend this color. And how do I amend this color? By actually clicking on this icon in here, which is the icon for RGB, double click, and it will take me into the mixer. And I can now go and I can actually start to mix my color and make it a little bit darker, which is really helpful if you want to actually mix your color um, while you're in the gradient mode. All right, fantastic. Okay, by the way, I'm just going to save now because I haven't actually uh, saved it. And I'm going to save it as icon drawing one. I'll just do it as an A because I've got, I've got that already. Just say save. All right. And obviously, yes, save it. And back to the, um, into the Y mode. Again, I'm going to use my offset path to get a perfect circle that's concentric to this one, but larger. So I'm going to go to object path, offset path, and again, it's to the positive, so if you wanted to make it, uh, uh, if you wanted to create a circle that's smaller, then obviously you will go to the minus, but I want to make it larger, so again, I'm going to use 25 uh, pixels, put the preview on, no, that's too large, make it 20, preview on and off, nope, let's do it, a 17 again, preview on and off, Yep, that's fine. Say so, okay. Now again, uh, this is obviously um, the angle of this gradient is wrong. So I'm just going to do minus 90 and boom, there I have it. Again, maybe this color is a little bit too dark. So I'm just going to make it a little bit lighter, a little bit lighter, a little bit lighter. Okay. All right. And Bob's your uncle. Maybe this one as well. Maybe I've just made it a little bit. Double click, go into the mixer, and just make it a little bit lighter. Just make sure that you, yeah, you do it on both sides. So on the pink and on the, I mean, on the magenta and on the green. All right, and back to the Y mode, and let's do a save. All right, um, I'm going to, I'll drag this one my inner circle, uh, sorry, my outer circle. Oops, sorry, I'm going into isolation mode. I'm going to, uh, I'll drag that and then just make it a little bit smaller. Okay. And I'm just going to fill it with I'm just going to fill it with the pink. All right, and then obviously I'm going to select my main two circles and bring them to the front, which is shift control square bracket to the right. All right, great stuff. I'm going to take this pink uh, circle on the Y mode, and again I am shift all dragging it to the other side, and I'm going to uh, fill that uh, with yellow. All right. 
Now, what we are missing is we are obviously missing a little bit of a shadow on, let's say, our main button. So again, I am going to select my, um, my main uh, button here in the middle. I'm going to go to Effects. I'm going to go to Stylize, and I'm going to go to Drop Shadow. And we're going to put our preview on. All right. Okay, so the problem with Drop Shadow is that uh, we um, have it on um, one side. Now, we can play with it. I'm just going to change the color for now. We can, uh, we can play with it. Nope. We want, we do want a gray. We do want a gray. Um, we want to make it, make it 15. And we want to play with our, with our uh, offset. Now, the problem with this is, to take the blur down, the problem with the, oh, nope, 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 okay. Um, the problem with this is that we have it, obviously, kind of only on one side, so that's not really what we want to do. So I'm going to cancel that, and if, if you applied an effect and you're not happy with it, this is very deliberate, don't worry. Um... If you want to apply an effect and you're not happy with that, then I'm going to just delete it. So in my appearance, I am just going to delete it. All right. So again, drop shadow is not always the uh, always the right move because in fact, a drop shadow is on one side kind of only. So again, my favorite is actually going to go to effect uh, stylize, and I'm going to now go to outer glow. So not inner glow, but outer glow. All right. Again, I'm going to do it multiply. All right. Put my preview on and there you see it. So choosing uh, outer glow will give you the same amount of shadow in a way all around your object. So it's not just on one side, normally like a drop shadow, but it's the same for everything. All right. So again, I'm just going to choose, kind of going to choose a, a pink uh, for now. Um, and obviously you want to multiply and we can also change the opacity, maybe not make it so severe and, uh, just make it 50% and say, okay. All right. And we're going to save. So we're nearly there. This was very quick. We're nearly there. Uh, if we go to the Y mode again, I am just going to, uh, draw these, the pause button and the, the actual play button. I'm going to zoom in now for the, for the pause button, I'm obviously going to do a rounded rectangle again. And before I start, sometimes just look at what's the color in your foreground. So I don't want this to be a gradient. So I'm just going to choose white and I'm going to draw kind of a tiny little rounded rectangle. And then again, I'm going to use Shift and Alt, and I'm going to uh, just drag it. Why am I using Shift? Because I want to drag it on the same horizontal axis, and obviously Alt is to duplicate. All right. So on this side, I'm now going to draw a rectangle. But if you actually look at, oh, can't see. If you actually look at the object, then this is kind of rounded, rounded corner. So how would I draw a uh, how do I draw a triangle, but it has rounded corners? Hmm. Let's think about that. Okay. So I'm going to go to my polygon and I'm going to draw a polygon. Oops. No, I do not want a funny looking uh, polygon. I'm going to control Z. Double click the polygon before you start and then click on your, uh, uh, on your page. And now we're going to say, I wanted three and just say, okay. All right, so there is my triangle. I am going to double click my rotation tool and I'm just going to say 90. And then, sorry, minus 90. Okay. And zero maybe? Nope. 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 Okay, I'll just turn it the way I want it with my R. 
All right, apologies for that. Then I'm going to draw it smaller and I'm going to put it there in its place. Maybe make it bigger again and it is white. So in the normal mode, if I go out of Y mode, it has, I'm just going to make it slightly bigger, it has pointed, very pointed points, terrible pointed points, uh, very sharp points. Now, how do I get them rounded? Very easy. So I'm going to go to my effects. I'm going to go to stylize, and now I'm going to say round corner. So everything that actually has points can also have round corners. I'm going to go to my round corners, put my preview on, and you'll see that 10 pixels is obviously massive. So I'm going to just change it to two, put my preview on and off, and boom, Bob's your uncle. There it is. Fantastic. I've got a... I've got a triangle that's got rounded corners. Again, I know that I have done it because if I go and look at my appearance palette, there it is, there it sits in my appearance palette on my path and it says rounded corners. Control zero to kind of like view it and that's our beautiful little button. If you think that it's too sharp, for instance, if you think that your concentric circles are too sharp and you want to make it a, uh, a little bit softer, then you can. Obviously, I can select these circles, and now I'm going to apply a tiny, tiny little bit of a blur. So I'm going to go to Effect. I'm going to go down to the Photoshop effects, and I'm going to say Blur. I'm going to put a, a Gaussian Blur on. Very little, say one. All right. So it really just, if I click off, it really just uh, soften it up. And I'm going to apply that on my big circle as well. Now, since you've applied it, if you go back into your effects panel, boom, it's there. All right, so apply Gaussian Blur. Boom, it's there. If I click off, it's just a tiny bit uh, softer. All right, and you can do that with some of the other circles as well. Okay, and yeah. Uh, there you've drawn uh, you've drawn an icon. You can add some highlights um, if you want, uh, top to bottom, uh, and that's kind of the last thing that we will do. But up to here, I think it's uh, it's super grand. We can also now uh, take a little bit of an uh, or put a little bit of an outer glow on our on our uh, big rounded rectangle. So I'm going to go back into effects. Going to go to stylize, going to go to uh, outer glow, put my preview on. And the beautiful thing is that it remembers the last one. So now I can go put my opacity up, maybe make it 100, and maybe make my blur 20. And there it is. So again, as a little tip, it's not actually drop shutters. It's either inner glow or outer glow. So if you've learned anything today, it's really not, we don't really use uh, drop shutters if we want to create uh, these kind of drop shutters. All right, so I said the last thing is just to make it really cool is to add a little bit of highlights uh, at the top. So how do I do that? Well, this is a fairly complicated little process, but I'm going to take you through it step by step. All right. So I'm going to select my, uh, my large rounded rectangle, all right? I'm always copying it to the pasteboard just in case something goes wrong and I have it. So I'm going to control C, copying it to the pasteboard. While it's here, I'm also going to select it and then I'm going to also shift or drag it, okay? All right? And Shift, I'll drag it again. All right. So you should see three. So I'm going to select these two, not the back one, these two. All right. Sorry. And a lot of times this must be done in the Y mode. So I'm going to select these two. All right. And now I am going to use my Pathfinder palette. And I am going to say, second option, cut the front from the back. And what I have now is a tiny little piece that I could use, nudge it up for a highlight. And make sure that this is actually filled with white or your lightest color. 
So you just want there to slightly be a little bit of a highlight there at the top. Did you get it? All right, could you do it? Another one. We do it at the bottom as well. All right. Okay, let's do that again. I'm selecting my really big uh, rounded rectangle. Okay, I'm going to work in the Y mode. That's easier for me. I'm going to shift, I'll drag it. All right. Oopsie, sorry. Shift, I'll drag it. All right. I'm going to shift, I'll drag it again. Now I've got three. I'm going to select this and that one. All right. Not my main one. And then I'm going to use my Pathfinder palette and minus front, the second option in my shape modes. Boom. And there I have that shape. And now that one I'm going to fill with a darker pink so that I have a shadow. And I'm just nudging it down. And there is a beautiful button. Voila. That's our drawing tutorial for today. I hope you've learned something. All right. For me, it was a lot of fun. I hope it was fun for you too. That's it.